Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Dr. Shan and we have been talking about JavaScript. In this session, now we're going to talk a little bit more about JavaScript and starting from comments. Now, previously we talked about basics of JavaScript. Introduction, how we write the JavaScript code, where we write the JavaScript code, how the output is going to be, the statements and the basic syntax structures of JavaScript. Okay, so uh, the video is there uh, on the i, just click on it and you can find this previous video. Let's for move forward and now talk about comments. So moving forward, let's talk about JavaScript comments. And JavaScript comments are basically are again comments that we use with a double backslash. So every time you want to comment out something, by commenting means something that is not readed by the browser or not executed by the browser. In fact, that's the correct way to say it, that JavaScript comments basically allow you us to prevent execution. So anything you write as a comment with these double backslash will not be executed by the, uh, the browser. So um, this is double backslash change heading. So this is just a string. So usually we write comments for just simple uh, understanding, some coding documentation, writing the notes within our code, letting it, the system know what we are trying to do. Okay, and it's an absolutely important thing. Every good programmer requires that you have comments. Uh, every developer, every team requires you to do document within your code. So writing comments is quite essential. So it's a very simple thing, basic thing. Whenever we use the double backslash, this line of code does not get executed. Java only reads this, JavaScript only executes this using the browser and this line again goes uh, as a simple comment. So it's just something we write to understand what we are trying to do here. That's it. That's what basically comments are. You can use something called a multi-line comments where multi-line comments means if you have to do a multiple lines of comments and multiple text or multiple code that you just want to hide temporarily, basically we use this multi-line comments. And for that, we use backslash steric and then steric backslash. So this basically is a special sig signature that allows us to comment out every single thing within our code. Okay. So these are basically simple comments. Now, moving forward, let's talk more about JavaScript variables. What exactly are variables? Well, you can consider variables as a containers. They are basically used to store the data. That's what basically variables are. So we have a direct values, which are literals. Remember, we talked about this previously. So these are literals, but sometimes it's easier to process and work with these literals if we hold them in a container. That way we can change it modify it, update and do various different operations on them very easily. So that's why we tend to use containers. And by the way, every single programming language in the world, uh, typically every single programming language in the world will have some form of containers or as they call them variables. So this is a common word. So if you're coming from any other language, it's the same thing. Uh, or if you will be continuing to any other language, containers or variables basically meaning the same concept. In JavaScript, typically we use three different ways. First is automatic. We don't use anything and JavaScript automatically assigns the variable type. Then we have something called var, let, and constant. Let's discuss each one individually. So if I automatic, meaning that if I have this and I don't provide anything prefix, I just use x is equal to 5. This is an automatic, what we call variable declaration. So we use a script tag. We said x plus x is equal to 5, y is equal to 6, and z is equal to x plus y. So what we have done is we have taken a variable x, assigned it a value 5, we can a variable y, assigned it a variable 6. And then we added these two variables together. So add the value of x, whatever is stored in x, add it with y value. So whatever is stored in y, the both values will be added. So technically, we are adding whatever is inside the container. So this container is just a reference point referring to these two values and then whatever the answer comes we are storing it in a third variable called z then we can use document dot get element by id again remember this means that this is our web document inside this document there's element by id named demo so there's an element named id okay uh, element with an uh, id name called demo and then what you need to do is you need to change this inner html to the value of z is plus x so we are changing the xml uh, internal uh, value of this HTML. So when we execute it, we get the answer here. The value of Z is this. So this line comes from JavaScript. Okay. This is typically a variable is. Um, then uh, we use something called a var. Okay. So when we use var, basically we provide var as a prefix. And now um, from example, you can guess that this is what it does. So what prefix does is that var is basically what we refer to as a reserve word keyword. It lets Java um, JavaScript know that you are creating a variable. Okay whether it's integer, byte, character, short, float, long, it doesn't really matter, okay? Var will basically create a variable in JavaScript that will allow us to save these variables, uh, save this value as a variable. Similarly, let and constant are again two variables, which here it says that there are keywords, meaning that you cannot use var itself as a, a variable name. So this is a variable name, variable name, variable name. This means basically, hey, this is a var, this is a variable, x is equals to 5, okay? 
so uh, we can use var we can use let we can use constant the difference between them is that a constant if you use as a keyword this will make your variable constant you cannot later on change it so for example if i have constant x is equals to 5 now i cannot change the value of x it will give me an uh, error it will say hey this is a constant you cannot say x is equal to something else so for example if i say uh, x uh, x is equals to now 10 this will say no this is you cannot do that hey this is a constant x value is constant means this value cannot change anymore so if you change its value it will complain okay that's what constant is let again is another way of declaring a variable this is in, in technically a new way let's just talk more about this let in next session so a let variable basically is used to declare a variable however there's a key difference when we say we declare a variable with a let prefix we have a block scope okay by block scope means that variable declared inside a block cannot be accessed outside the block whereas a variable declared as a var can be used outside of a block so if you declare a block now what exactly is a block we use blocks typically within uh, everywhere and technically if you um, understand it if we use it within functions so if we talk about functions later on uh, in the next sessions we will be talking more about functions here so we will be using these blocks so each function has a block when we say block it basically means hey this block cannot be used as a uh, this variable sorry cannot be used outside the block okay or uh, so if you declare it as a let you cannot use it if you declare it as a var it, you can uh, use it because var basically becomes like a public variable and you can use it outside of the block as well that's the key difference so let will create a variable however the scope is limited only within the block so if you have a if block if you have a else block if you have a constant blocks if you have function blocks if you declare a variable inside them using let they can only be used inside that this is a standard typical behavior so if you're coming from java or python this is a typical behavior but uh, in this case this variable becomes global meaning you can use it outside of the block that's the key difference between it okay so a variable defined the, with let cannot be redeclared so you cannot accidentally redeclare a variable using the variable let so if you declare a variable as let and set it to a string john do now you cannot do this again so you cannot redeclare it x is equals to 10 this will create a problem they said hey i already have a variable it's already a string type it already has a value you cannot do that you cannot redeclare it again by redeclaring means i've used let is equals to uh, let x is equals to 10 okay whereas if you declare it as a var you can do that so that's the second major difference we said between var and let okay so if you set it var as equals to x is equal to john do later on you can redeclare x is equals to zero as well so that's why sometimes nowadays programmers do prefer more stricter rules so to understand exactly what's happening and to ensure certain standard programming rules if you if you understand that okay so um in this other case we say that redeclaring a variable using var keyword can impose a problem so if you use this if you redeclare it there can be several problems within the code as well so for example here var x is equals to 10 here the x value is 10 then in a block it could be a block it could be a function or it could be any other thing within your code and you declare var x is equals to 2 and so x becomes 2 so now later on if you want to process x which value should it hold okay so obviously it will hold 2 because the latest update was this but you, you maybe you just want to use this previous value this is the problem that occurs so we need to be careful with that similarly if you go to constants well constant as we declared are basically variable prefix that cannot be redeclared cannot be reassigned and have a block scope again that basically means that if you declare a variable with pi now you cannot change its value so if i declare pi is equal to 3.5 now changing its original value this will give me an error if i say pi plus 10 and assign it again to pi this will again be clear so we use constant and we ensure that the variable use uh, that are there must be assigned a value and then have been declared so every time you use a constant you need to provide it a value and you cannot no longer change it so that's the major difference with uh, what we call constant okay so uh, when to use javascript constants always declare a variable with constant when you want to know the value you should not be changed so if you know that a variable values should not be changed it has to be constant fixed no matter what this variable value may not change like pi for example right use constant okay so that way we can be very strict with it then let's talk more about arithmetic operators now uh, javascript arithmetic operators are quite simple they are again plus minus multiply divide and then we have something called comparison operators how do they work let's try it out okay so we have here a uh, code now we created a script tag and the script tag is closed so we assign a value of let x is equals to 5 then we say let y is equals to 2 and then let x plus uh, x plus y 
assign to a variable value z so simple javascript code create a one variable create a second variable and then we add these two variables value and assign it to a z now display z values so we say document dot get element by id demo so go to the document find an id called demo and change its inner html the value of sum of x plus y the value of sum of x plus y this becomes a string is equals to z we assign it a value so this becomes a very simple value now here are the arithmetic operators that we have used here plus so plus will use a plus operator so if we use minus we can use a minus sign so this now it will assign us the minus value then if we use divide this will use a divide sign okay so 2.5 and then we can use a multiplication as well so this will basically mean that if we use multiply we get a multiplication value so basically we have a variables and again the, we can do this directly here as well so we can come here and we can say hey x uh, for example 5 uh, multiplied by 10 okay oops 10 and then we run this code and we get 50 values okay so arithmetic operations are basically what we say that uh, we have a value that uh, when when we want to perform arithmetic operations on them we use these operators x plus y plus z okay so we have addition multiplication division you can perform all basic arithmetic operations on that then we have various different operators as well uh, in terms of talking we have arithmetic operators we just talked about this we you also have something called assignment operators in javascript we have a comparison operators in javascript we have string operators logical operators bitwise operators these are all various different operators that we can perform it so very quickly if you go through it we have arithmetic operators in other words you can perform arithmetic operations in any standard way in any mathematical standard way as you can so for example we have 10 plus 50 so we perform multi plus and then we assign it a multiplication as well so now what we're doing here is we say hey let a is equals to 3 let x is equals to this particular value so this is a simple math arithmetic expression where we use 10 plus 500 and then we multiply it with a value okay and so we can use addition subtraction multiplication for exponential exponential notation we use a double steric for division we use a backslash for module we use a percentage sign then we have increment and decrement operators okay these are all various different arithmetic operators let's talk more about what we call uh, these arithmetic operators in detail so these arithmetic operators again we have already talked about them so these plus minus multiply divide are there subtraction multiplication division uh, reminders and then we have increment operator this is something that i want to talk more about what increment operator does is that it adds up our uh, plus one to our current value so increment operators are quite fun and quite important throughout the programming so what this basically means that uh, for example i can say let me write this code just like this so i can say hey um, i can have a button so if i zoom in into it so i can say let me just create a button button tag bu double t one button and i can have on click event on it okay is equals to and then close this and then i can say bu double t one button okay and then i can say C O U N T R counter okay and then if i run this code now we have a button counter here but currently nothing happens so we can say okay once we have a button and then we can come here and we can say h1 and then backslash h1 so let's just create a heading okay and then we can give it an id is equals to bracket star bracket close and we can say C O U N T R counter so now what we have done is we have created a heading one with a counter okay and then again this paragraph is just for the next line so now idea is every time i click on it the counter should count certain value so what i do is i come here and i create a function called functn function oops uh, i can simply say here is that uh, uh, cuntr count okay simple as that so every time i click on a button this function gets executed now where is this function so we can come here in the html and we have a head tag it's not necessary we can write anywhere but as we have been talking about it let's explore it more so we say okay here's a script tag okay and backslash script script tag within this let me create a function called yes counter so we create a counter function okay bracket start bracket close and we say function function it's a counter what this function is supposed to do is it's going to create this thing uh, we're going to say hey there is a um, variable uh, c o u n t count is equals to starts from zero every time we come here and this function is called u do plus plus one 
okay so what this basically means take the current value of count whatever is the current value add one to it and assign it back to the counter this technically is equivalent to this thing so if we say hey take a variable count is equals to count plus one okay so what this basically means whatever is the current value of count plus add one to it and assign whatever the answer is back to the count okay so this is increment one so adding current one to current value of count in so this is in other words a short form so short way of writing this whole line so we can write this whole line or we can write this line technically means exact same thing and so what we have done is we declared a variable outside a function function is basically a code or block of code that gets executed every time we hit this function so if i run this code but now uh, the output is not getting because we have not told it that hey it do this output as well so in this case now we're going to say hey, okay once you have our go inside your document okay document d-o-c-u-m-e-n-t document get element by id get an element by id and the name of that element is c-o-u-n-t-e-r counter okay dot inner html change its inner html to the c-o-u-n-t count variables value so if i now run this execute this and so every time i press the counter button i get this counter now this is what javascript allows us to do what we are doing here is simply is we created a button we created a function counter and then we ask it hey every time i click on this button on click event is there that every time i click on this button execute this function so this forward is this function this is a javascript function we created here in this function we told it that hey listen there's a count variable it starts with a zero but every time this function gets executed increments its value by one and then print that value on the inner html of a element that has a counter id okay and so now whenever i click on it we get this counter id okay fantastic brilliant excellent so now if this gets executed and this is what basically our code allows us to do okay so we were arithmetic operators and we were talking about that so now let's talk more about uh, basically javascript data types and so i will talk more about this javascript data types in the next video